Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to be talking about Bernard Davis's YouTube experiment, which is the experiment that proved that direct cell contact was necessary for conjugation to occur between two bacteria. So first let's start by talking about bacterial conjugation. What is it? It is when genetic material is transferred from a donor cell to a recipient cell, specifically through direct cell-to-cell -cell contact. This happens by way of a structure called a pillus. So the pillus, also known as a sex pillus or a conjugation pillus, is constructed by the donor cell to allow it to attach to a recipient cell and then exchange genetic information. So for example, this donor cell has a plasmid, the recipient cell does not. The plasmid can include lots of genes, including genes for pillus synthesis, but also genes for things like toxin production or uh, antibiotic resistance genes or whatnot. And so with the process of conjugation, a, a, a copy of this plasmid is made and then given to the recipient cell, and that's conjugation. The fact that direct cell contact was necessary for this process was proven by Bernard Davis with this YouTube experiment. He used bacteria known as oxotropes. So oxytrophs are mutants that require an added nutrient. They will not grow on just minimal media. They have to have some nutrient added to that media, uh, whereas the original strain, the unmutated strain, could make that nutritional component itself and therefore could grow on minimal media. But the oxytrophs have picked up some mutation and now they need some other nutrient added in order to be able to grow. So let's look at the two oxytrophic strains that Bernard Davis used. Strain A is what we call T minus, L minus, B1 minus, B plus, M plus. And all this means is that where it has a plus, it can make that nutrient. It can make biotin and it can make methionine. But it's been mutated so that it, its genes that allowed it to make threonine, leucine, and thiamine have, um, are, are no longer functional. So we write T minus, L minus, and B1 minus. The B1 is for thiamine, which is a B vitamin. That's where that um, nomenclature comes from. So that was strain A. It could make its own biotin and methionine, but needed the other three to be supplemented in its media. Strain B was just the opposite. It was T plus, L plus, B1 plus, B minus, M minus. So it was perfectly capable of making its own threonine, leucine, and thiamine, but it could not make its own biotin and methionine. Those things had to be added to its, uh, its media in order for it to be able to grow. So he set up this YouTube experiment called YouTube because the tube is in the shape of a U. And there was a filter in the middle and the filter would allow solution from either side to pass through, but not the cells. So the solution could move through these pores, but the cells themselves were sequestered on either side. So strain A was added to this side, strain B was added to this side. There is a cotton plug on one end. There's also a rubber plug on the other end with um, a hollow glass tube that was used to apply either pressure or suction. So pressure would push the solution this way, suction would pull the solution this way, and so the solution that each strain was in could go back and forth, but the cells themselves had to stay on either side. And the key here is that if conjugation was possible without direct cell contact, remember that this experiment was done long before we knew about the pillus, if conjugation was possible without, cell, without direct cell contact, then you would expect a prototroph to form. A prototroph is just a, um, a strain that has, um, that has obtained the, the, the previous unmutated strains functions. What we mean by that 
is here we have strain A. Remember, it's lacking the genes to make three things. We have strain B, which has those three things, but is lacking the, the genes to make the other two things, which strain A can make. And so if recombination occurs between these cells, if they're able to exchange genetic material, then we would expect these two things to happen where they exchange some DNA and you get some cells that have all five non-functional mutant genes and other cells that are capable of making all five of those nutrients themselves. This right here is what's called the prototrope. So it is no longer oxytrophic. It has regained the ability to grow on minimal media. So if no direct contact was required, you would see the appearance of prototrophs. So Bernard Davis did this experiment. He did the pressure and the suction back and forth to mix the, the solution of those cells. And then he took cells from this arm, plated them on minimal media, cells from this arm, plated them on minimal media. And here are his results. Neither side yielded cells that could grow on that minimal media. So there were no prototrophs that formed. And the fact that there were no prototrophs proved that direct contact was, requi was required. That this filter right here that separated the two cells kept them from being able to do bacterial conjugation, kept them from being able to exchange genetic material. If he did the same experiment without the filter, where the cells were able to have direct contact, then prototrophs would have formed. And so that is how he proved that direct cell contact uh, was necessary for conjugation. And then at a later point, when um, sort of microscopy was improved, the, the sex pillus um, was discovered at that point. So if you are interested in learning more about conjugation, I do have a more in-depth video that covers the subject of bacterial conjugation. So please check that out if you're interested and thanks for watching Biology Professor.